Hello and welcome back to our deck building card game and Unity tutorial series. Today we're going to work on setting up a grid manager. And so this is um, kind of what it's going to look like whenever we're done. We'll have a grid here in the center. Okay, and what this is, this is the start of us being able to play our cards onto the field. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we'll go over how to set that up and some changes that you can make to configure it how you like your grid to look. And in the future, we'll start working on, you know, being able to actually play the cards and having them actually show up on the screen after you let go. Let's get to it. So, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to go ahead and grab... The uh, grid, uh, the grid outline image from the shared drive that should be in the description of this video. You'll just drag it into your project into the sprites folder. And we want to make sure that this grid is going to always be the size of one square. And to make sure that, we, that that is possible, we want to look at the size of the image which down here is 536 by 536. So then we're going to go up to our pixels per unit. We'll change this to 536. And then we might want to use it for other things in the future. And so we want to make sure that its size is scalable and always looks right. So we're going to go into our sprite editor. And down here where it says border... We're going to put 12, 12, 12, 12. This left, right, top, and bottom. What this is doing, it's actually allowing us to splice this image, and it will adjust its size if we need to resize the grid to make it more rectangular in shape, you know, longer one way than the other, or if we just want to change how everything looks. Okay, so this will allow us to do that more effectively and make it look better. We'll hit apply here, close out, and then we'll move on. So next we're going to go into our scripts folder. And we're going to make uh, two new scripts in here. So create C sharp script. And we're going to name this grid cell. Create C sharp script. We're going to name this grid manager. Okay. And so what this is, is uh, this is going to be our individual cells in our grid. And this one's going to be our manager that's actually going to create the grid. So let's jump into our grid cell script really quick. Okay, and we want to go ahead and delete everything that's here. We also don't need system collections or system collections generic. Um, all we need to in here is we need a public vector to grid index and then public bool cell fool. And we're going to set this equal to false because the cells are going to be empty at the beginning. Okay, and then public game object object in cell so basically what these different variables is first it's going to store where this particular cell is at on our grid then it's going to store if the cell is full or not because we don't want to put something in a cell that's already full right and then next we're going to have our object in cell and this is just going to store the object that is currently inside of that cell. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, easy to understand. Let's move on to our a prefab for our grid cells. Back inside of the Unity Editor, we're going to right click in our hierarchy, create empty. We're going to name this grid cell prefab. Okay, and we're going to add a sprite renderer to this. And we're going to put our grid outline sprite as the sprite for the sprite renderer. 
Next, we're going to add a Box Collider 2D. And on Is Trigger, we're going to check that. And then we're going to add the Grid Cell script that we just created. Once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and drag and drop this into our Prefabs folder. Now we're going to open up our grid manager, and this is going to be uh, our longer script today. So we can go ahead and uh, delete our default methods we have in here. And let's go ahead and start out with our variables. So we have a few variables here to start out with. First, we have our width and our height. This is going to be wi the width and height of our grid. This is public, so we can change this in the inspector, so you can modify the grid however you want. I want it to be 8x4, because what I'm imagining is that you'll be able to place units in the first two rows on your side. Then I want to have two additional rows that units can move into. And then there'll be a divide, and then they'll be on the enemy's side, and they'll have those two empty rows, and then the two rows they can place in uh, units inside of. So I'm imagining kind of a board where units can move across and attack each other. Um, and that's kind of what I'm thinking the game loop is going to be for this game. Next we have public game object grid cell prefab. And this we will be assigning the grid outline, uh, the grid cell prefab, and the inspector. Next, we're going to create a new list. This is going to be a list of game objects, and this is going to be called grid objects. What this is, it's going to be a total list of all the units or objects that are in our grid. And finally, we have another public game object, which is going to be an array. It's going to be a 2D array. That's why we have this right here. We're setting up a 2D array. Um, so 2D means it's gonna, it has like an X and a Y like a grid, you know, and then grid cells. And so this is going to be a list where we are storing each of our grid cells inside so we can reference them easily. Next, we're going to go into our start method, void start. And this is just going to be a very simple start method, create grid. So we are calling a method that we have not yet written out. So void create grid. Okay, and so the very first thing that we need to do is we need to set up our 2D array to be the size we want it to be. And then we also want to make sure that our grid is growing from the center of our parent object. That way, when we remove our parent object, it's easy to just kind of position it exactly how we want. So it's based off of the center of the grid instead of like a corner of the grid. Um, I will explain what that means in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, actually, I'll have to explain that once we're done writing out the script. I'll try to uh, loop back around to that, what I mean for having a center offset and everything. Okay. So first we're going to do grid cells. Remember, that's that e array that we set up just a moment ago. New game object. And then it's going to be the size of our width and the size of our height. Oh, I missed an equals. Sign, sorry. Okay, and next we need to go ahead and calculate our center offset. So this is going to be a vector 2. So vector 2 is equal to our center offset. And this is going to be a new vector 2. And what's going to be is our width divided by 2, because we want it in the center. Minus 
it just kind of makes it more centered because of how um, Unity works with positioning objects. And then the same thing for height divided by 2 minus 0.5. Okay, so next we're going to start creating our grid. All right, so we're going to start with a four loop right here. So four x equals zero. X is less than width x plus plus. So remember, we're setting up our x and y, we're setting up our grid, and we're positioning those individual cells within the grid, right? We actually want to do the exact same thing for our y. For y equals 0, y is less than our height, y plus plus. So this is looping through every single x value and every single y value. Alright, so the very first thing we want to do is we need to get our grid position, where we're at on the grid. So how we get that is we just look at our current x value, and our current y value, and we sort that into a vector 2. Next, we need to calculate our spawn position. Because our spawn position is different than our grid position. Okay, so our spawn position is our grid position minus our center offset. Okay, so this ensures that we are positioning our grid cells uh, equally spaced from our center. I know I've repeated that multiple times, but it's important to understand that when we're making this grid so we can position it easier when we need to make adjustments. Okay, next we need to start creating our cell blocks. To do that, we're going to do game, game object grid cell is going to equal and then we're going to instantiate we're going to call back to our grid cell prefab. We're going to put it in our spawn position. Or make sure its rotation is zero. Okay, so next we need to make sure that the cells are, that they are children of our grid manager. And so to do that, we need to do grid cell dot transform dot set parent transform. So what this does is it's going to look at the grid cell we just created. It's going to find the transform component of that grid cell. And it's going to set its parent to the transform of this object. So having this right here is the exact same as going this dot transform. The this is implied since we're not specifying what transform it is. It's implied that's coming from the same game object. So we actually, that's why it's grayed out here. We actually don't need the this qualification here. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, then hop into our Discord and I'll be uh, more than happy to go into a deeper dive on it with you. Next thing we need to do is we need to kind of like um, store the grid position inside of the grid cell. Remember, inside of our grid cell script, we have a um, grid index. Okay. So in order to get that, we need to go grid cell dot get component. And so we need, because we need to get that grid cell component that's attached to the game object. Okay. And then we're going to do grid index so remember that grid index is this vector 2 right here and we're going to store our grid position as our grid index this is just telling the grid cell hey you're in this you are this cell you are this position inside of the 2d array grid cells Okay, and then finally, we're going to do grid cells x, y, set it equal to 
grid cell. So what this is doing is it's going into our array, which size we set up here. It's going to the position X, Y, and it is storing this game object inside of that array. The reason why we're doing all this is so that in the future, we can interact with the cells and we can interact with the game objects inside of those cells. It'll allow us to, like, we, like I spoke about before, it's going to allow us to actually put objects inside of those cells and interact with them. Okay, so next we need to kind of figure out how we're going to add objects to our grid. And this is going to be pretty simple, honestly, um, but it's going to look complicated. So we're going to set up a bool. The reason why we're setting up a bool here is because we want to be able to return true or false. True, if we are able to put the object inside the cell. False, if we are unable to put it in the cell. Oh, I missed the P here. So we have public add object to grid that's going to be the name of our method and this is a bool okay so we're going to take two arguments inside of this method our first ar argument needs to be a game object it's going to be the object that we want to put inside the cell next is going to be a vector 2 and it's going to be the grid position where we want to try and put that cell or where we want to try and put that object Okay, so first things first, we need to make sure that we're not looking outside of our grid. Otherwise, we'll get some errors thrown. So to do this, we need to make sure that our grid position not x, which is right here, this is what we're passing in, is less or greater than or equal to zero. And grid position not x is less than width. And grid position not y is greater than or equal to zero. And grid position not y is less than height. So this is all making sure that we're looking inside of our grid. Now, if if it is outside that grid, what we want to do is else return false. What this says is that, hey, you try to put an object inside this grid, but you're actually trying to put it outside the grid, so there's no object or no grid spot to put it in, so this is going to return false. You cannot put an object there. So next we're going to do grid cell cell and this is going to equal grid cells grid position dot x grid position dot y get component grid cell. So what this is doing is it's looking for the cell inside of our grid cells array. Okay. And then after it gets that grid cell object, what we're going to do is if that cell is full, then we want to return false. So remember, inside of our grid cells, we have a bool called cell full. Okay? And so if cell dot cell full is true meaning that that cell is full we're going to return false and say yeah sorry buddy you can't put an object here try again okay but if cell full is empty what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put that object in there
Okay, so to do that, first, we need to instantiate our object. So to do this, we're going to do game object is going to equal new object. So we're going to, then we're going to instantiate. We're going to call back our object that was passed as an argument. And we are going to set its position to the same position as the cell. And we're going to set its rotation to zero. Okay, and then same with our cells. What we want to do is we then want to set the parent of the object to this grid manager. And then we want to add this object, grid objects dot add new object. We want to add this object to our grid objects list. And then finally, we want to go ahead and store our values inside of our grid cell. So to do that, we're going to again, we're going to call on to our cell that we set up here. And we're going to do cell dot object in cell. And we're going to set it equal to our new object that we just made. And now an object is in there. So cell dot cell fool equals true. And then finally, since we were successful in putting an object in here, we want to return true. So all this is doing is it's going to allow us to put objects into our grid. We're not going to be actually doing that today, but setting up the groundwork to allow us to do it. Let's go ahead and save that script and jump back over into the editor. So we're back inside of our editor, um, and I've noticed that our grid cell prefab is set to zero, zero. So I'm just going to check that prefab real quick. And yeah, so, uh, we need to go ahead and double check that our grid cell prefab, that's position is set to zero, 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 because that could cause some issues in the future. Okay, but then we can jump back to our scene. We can go ahead and delete this grid cell prefab. And I'm just doing this just to make sure. Yeah, zero, zero, zero. You see the grid there. I'm going to delete it though, because we don't need it right now. So next I'm going to right click, create empty. I'm going to call this grid manager. And then I'm going to add that grid manager script that we just created. So now I'm going to drag this grid cell, grid cell prefab into there. Okay, and my height is eight, my width is, or my width is eight, my height is four. And then before we hit play, we're gonna just go ahead and go to our grid manager and set the position to zero, zero, zero. And then we can hit play And now we have a grid here. All right, and we can adjust its position by moving the grid however we want. Now I want it to be centered right now, I think. Um, but yeah, so earlier I was talking about how the cells needed to be positioned away from the center. So if we look at this one, this one is going to be, yeah, our bottom, our bottom left corner. And see how it's perfectly spaced from the center. But if you look at the X, it's actually 3.5 and the Y is negative 1.5. This is because its center is in the middle of the square. So its center is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So that's why we need to have that 0.5 offset. Okay, so back to our game. I am liking the look of this grid cell, but I don't think it's quite big enough. So I'm gonna change the scale to 
to five, I think. There we go, that's bigger. We see now it's definitely too low. Change this to a one, maybe 1.25. Yeah, I think that that is kind of the perfect positioning right now. I think that looks really well. Alright, so simple enough, easy to do. I hope that it was easy to understand what we're doing here. I feel like this is probably one of our more, more simple tutorials that we're doing. Um, sorry it took so long to get this one out. I've been sick. I am just now starting to get back to normal. I'm still a little sick, but, you know, I'm feeling good enough to do this. Um, as for your homework, what I want you to work on is I want you to find a way for when we are looking at these different cells, when our mouse is hovering over it, I want it to change the color of the cell so it kind of looks like a highlight. You know? So, like, say I'm mousing over this bottom corner. I want the um, the color of the cell to, like, change to red or a blue or something like that, you know? It's very similar to what we're doing to our cards here. So, I think that you can figure it out. Um, and, yeah, we will go over that in the homework review. And... I'll see you next time.